online Sunday school program. I hope everyone has been keeping safe during lockdown. Today's service will be started off with two worship songs. The first is called This Is Amazing Grace, followed by a cover song by Carmel called Trust In You by Lauren Daigle.
every single dream I lay each one down at your feet Every moment of my wandering Never changes what you see I try to win this war, I confess my hands are weary, I need your rest Mighty warrior, king of the fight No matter what I face, you're by my side When you don't move the mountains, I'm needing you to move When you don't part the waters, I wish I could walk through When you don't get the answers cry out to you I will trust I will trust I will trust in you truth is to know what tomorrow brings there's not a day that you have not seen so let all things be my life and breath I want what you want, Lord, and nothing less When you don't move the mountains, I'm needing you to move When you don't part the waters, I wish I could walk through When you don't get the answers, as I cry out to you I will trust, I will trust, I will trust in you You are my steady hand You are my firm foundation The rock on which I stand Your ways are always higher Your plans are always good There's not a place where I go You've not already stood When you don't move the mountains I could walk through when you don't get the answers as I cry out to you I will trust I will trust I will trust in you I will trust in you I will trust in you I will trust in Carmel for singing that song for us. I hope you all enjoyed it. Next we have Abigail and Tanit who will be teaching about trusting God's plan. Please write notes and focus closely during the teaching. Following this Brooke will be playing the saxophone. Hi guys! Hey everyone! Welcome back to our third virtual Sunday school and um, so please just join me in prayer. Dear Lord I pray today, I pray for everyone watching this to gain something Father. Father, I pray for everyone to be covered by the blood of, blood of Jesus, Father. And Father, I pray for everyone to feel safe and to feel at home, Father. And Father, I pray for everyone to encounter and to worship you, Father. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. So guys, um, we're just going to start off our lesson. I hope you guys enjoyed last lesson. And yeah. Last lesson was about God's love. And today's lesson is going to be about trusting in God's plan. Jeremiah 29.11 For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans for you to prosper and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. In times of hardship or confusion, it is important to stand strong in God's word and trust in his promises and his plan. In the Bible, there are many examples of people staying strong in God's word and trusting his plan. In today's lesson, we'll be focusing on The story of Joseph. Jacob was a Hebrew who lived in Canaan. He had 12 sons, but unfortunately his wife Rachel had died. 
She was the mother of his two younger sons, Joseph and Benjamin. Jacob's favorite son was Joseph, and he gave him a special present, which was a coat of many colors. Joseph's brothers were jealous of him. They hated him because their father loved him the most. One night, Joseph had a strange dream. He told his brothers how they had all been in the harvest field tying up the corn, when their sheaves of corn bowed down to his. Another time, Joseph dreamt that the sun and the moon and eleven stars were all blowing down to him as if he was a king. He told his brothers about his dream, but they were very cross. They guessed that the dream was about them bowing down to Joseph. One day, Jacob asked Joseph to go see if his brothers were safe. They had been away for a long time in the fields where they were looking after animals. When the brothers saw Joseph, they wanted to kill him. But Reuben, their eldest, just to throw him into a deep pit instead. Soon after, some merchants came by on camels. They were on their way to Egypt. One of the brothers said, let's sell Joseph to make some money. So they pulled Joseph out of the pit, took his coat and sold him for 20 silver coins. The brother dipped Joseph's coat into goat's blood and took it to their father. Jacob thought Joseph must have died. He was very upset. Joseph, meanwhile, was sold as a slave to a rich man called Potiphar. He worked very hard as a slave and was soon put in charge of Potiphar's house and other slaves. Sadly, Joseph was soon in trouble again, but he was not to blame. He upset Potiphar's wife and made up lies about him. She, Joseph was put in prison. While he was there, two men who worked for Pharaoh were also locked up. They both had strange dreams and Joseph told them what they meant. Later, Pharaoh had strange dreams too. No one could tell him what they meant. One of the men now freed from prison told Pharaoh about Joseph. He was sent for, he was sent for and Pharaoh told him about his dream. In one, seven large cows came out of the river Nile followed by seven thin cows. The thin cows then ate the large cows. In the second dream, seven large stalks of corn were eaten by the seven thin ones. Joseph explained Pharaoh's dream. He said there would be seven years of good harvest in Egypt, where there would be lots of food to eat. Seven years of famine would follow, when nothing would grow. He told Pharaoh that they should store corn so that they could not survive. Then this all happened as Joseph had said he was made governor. In Canaan, Jacob and his sons were starving. Jacob sent ten of his sons to Egypt to buy corn from the governor. Joseph's brothers did not know him. They told him about their family. He said they were spies. To prove that they weren't, Joseph told them he would give them grain, but they must return with their youngest brother. Meanwhile, Simon would stay in prison. They soon needed to go back to Egypt for more corn. They had to take Benjamin this time to prove they were not spies. They were so pleased when Joseph came, welcomed them and set Simon free. On their way home, with their corn and a horseman came along and said they had stolen his master's silver cup. To their horror, it was found in Benjamin's sack. This was a part of Joseph's plan. Joseph wanted to see what kind of people they were now. He told Benjamin that he must be his slave. Judah, the brother who had sold Joseph years ago, said, if you, ke if you keep Benjamin, my father will die of grief, but please keep me instead. When Joseph saw his brothers had changed, hugged them and asked them to fetch his father, his father and reveal to them that he was in fact Joseph. Now, all the family moved to Egypt to be with Joseph. So, what can we learn from the story of Joseph? Joseph's coat had been striped, but not his character. Although his coat had been taken off from him, he was able to keep up his character and integrity. He may not be wearing a beautiful coat as a slave, but his character stood out amongst the other slaves in Egypt. Instead of fancy clothes and outward appearance, there is no doubt character is the best opportunity to gain respect and trust from others. Sometimes during tough times, we forget to trust that God's plan is to prosper you and not harm you. And we should therefore 100% trust in God. What can we learn from the story of Joseph? God protected him in the midst of troubles. Joseph was cast into the cistern 
by his jealous brothers eventually sold him to traders as a slave. Later on, he was imprisoned. In the midst of danger and hardship, God protected him because of his faithfulness. He may not see the overall picture of God's plan in his life, yet he remained faithful to God instead of complaining and embracing the culture of the people of Egypt. In return, the Lord had protected him. The summary of what we can take from this lesson. God will use every aspect of our lives, even the things that don't seem to fit, to bring about his plan. Even if you find yourself in confusion, don't lose hope in God's promise. God's plans and purposes are far greater than our own. God provides and blesses those who preserve him to follow. So guys, thank you for watching. I hope you guys took notes and Abigail's going to end us with prayer. Dear Lord, we thank you for the opportunity you've given us of coming together and praising and worshipping and learning about you. Lord Jesus, I pray that you bless those who are watching this video and I pray that they have gained some knowledge from Joseph's story and I pray they all become like Joseph and have strong faith in God. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, guys. Bye. Thank you. Bye. has been prepared by Eliana and Milka. Please use your notes and answer the questions about Joseph and his brothers. 
Right after this, the worship song called Chasing Me will be played. Hi guys, it's Eliana. Hey guys, it's Mocha and we're both in grid. So today we have another fun quiz for you to test if you've been listening during today's session. Today's quiz will consist of multiple choice questions and then normal questions. You have 10 seconds to answer these. Parents, please help support your children and help mark their answers. For this activity, you will need a pen and paper and make sure you don't cheat. There will be 10 questions you need to complete. I hope you have fun doing this little quiz and now let's start. Question one, who was Joseph's father? You have four options and you need to pick which one you think is right. So, Isaac, Israel, Jacob and Daniel. You have 10 seconds to answer this question. Answer one, Joseph's father was called Jacob. Question two, how many brothers did Joseph have? Five, 11, 10 or eight? Joseph had 11 brothers. Question three, what gift did Joseph's father give to him? A horse, a sling, a coat of many colors, or a harp? Joseph's father gave him a coat of many colours. Question four. Why did Joseph's brothers hate him? They hated his mother, Rachel. Joseph was rude to them. Joseph was smarter than them. Or their father loved Joseph the most. Joseph's brothers hated him because Jacob loved him the most. Question five. Instead of killing Joseph, his brothers... Now you need to answer the rest of this question. Either they broke his leg, stoned him, threw him into the pit, or tied him to a tree. His brothers threw him in the pit. Who brought Joseph as a slave? The Potiphar brought Joseph from the Ishmaelites. Question seven. What was the meaning of Pharaoh's dream? Food shortages. Question eight. What food item did people from many nations travel to Egypt to buy?
to buy grain? Question nine. What new name did the pharaoh give? Zephanath Panea. Question 10. Why did Joseph have the men put into Benjamin's sack? They put food and his silver cup. Thank you all for participating in this quiz. I hope you all enjoyed and learned something from this. God bless you all and have a great Sunday. We will see you next week. Bye. Bye. There's no way you won't go. Nothing you won't do. No place that I could hide You were always in pursuit I'm never too far gone Always in your side When I wait for you You're always right on time You're always pursuing Always pursuing Always pursuing me me and you're never gonna stop never gonna stop and you're never gonna stop never gonna stop chasing me you made a way for me opened up the door Jesus you have my heart now and forevermore You're always pursuing, always pursuing, always pursuing me More than the air I breathe I need you here with me And you're never gonna stop, never gonna stop And you're never gonna stop, never gonna stop chasing me
Now we have Brooke, who will be sharing the word of God from the book of Genesis, chapter 4. Please pay attention and listen carefully. Hi there. Today I'm going to be telling you the story from Genesis, chapter 4. It's a, it's a story of two brothers, and they were the sons of Adam and Eve, Cain and Abel. And so these two brothers were very different because Cain was a farmer and Abel was a shepherd. And there came a time when they were offering a sacrifice to God. And Cain, he was offering the best of his fruit, which he grew himself, and he offered it to the Lord. But Abel, he offered the firstborn of the flock. And when he makes a, an offering of the lamb to the Lord, he would slay the lamb or like kill the lamb and it would be burnt on an altar by a fire. And so therefore that would be a burnt offering to God. And there was something going on there. The Lord was happy with Abel's offering, but the Lord wasn't really pleased with Cain's offering because Abel offered a blood sacrifice to God. But Cain wasn't willing to do that. And so the Lord was pleased with Abel's offerings instead of Cain's. Instead of Cain's. And so this made Cain very angry. And so God, he spoke with Cain and said, Cain, why are you angry? And why do you look so unhappy? Why is your face down? Why is your face uh, like a frown? If you do well, would, will you not to be accepted? But if you do not do well, sin lies at the door. And so Cain, he wasn't really willing to bring himself to his happiness. And so his anger took hold of him. And he took Abel to a place where both of them were alone. And Cain, he came against his brother Abel and killed his own brother. And so Cain fled. But God, he spoke with Cain and said, Cain, where is your brother Abel? And Cain said, I don't know. Am I my brother's keeper? And then God is saying to him, what have you done? The voice of your brother's blood has called me to the earth. And, and so that shows that God, no matter what Cain may have done, it may look like that no one has seen Cain and Abel while those two were alone. But God, he saw everything. He knew that Cain killed his brother Abel. And so he is asking him, where is your brother Abel? What have you done? And when Cain said, I don't know, am I my brother's keeper? The way he said that was a way of saying that he didn't care about his brother Abel. He didn't care. He didn't really think that he was responsible for his brother. After all, he said, am I my brother's keeper? And so... God had punished Cain for his actions, for what he had done. The punishment was that Cain would be a fugitive. That means he would wander the face of the earth and he would, and whatever he would uh, till on the ground, whatever he would grow on the ground, it would not bring forth much of his good, good fruit and his uh, vegetables, the way he always used to do. And so he would flee from the, he would be out of the presence of God and his life would be without God. And so Cain, he said, this punishment is greater than what I can bear. And if anybody will find me, they will kill me. Cain, he wasn't sorry for what he had done. When he said that the punishment was greater than what he could bear, he meant that he, what he was really saying was, 
it saying was, it's not fair. And you get that idea when your mum or your dad, they disciplining you and they are banning you from something because of something wrong that you've done. The, a lot of uh, you children would say, it's not fair. Why do, what, what have I done? It's not fair. Why am I punished like this? But in reality, that's a way of your parents disciplining you. And not only was Cain feeling neglected, but he felt like he felt a fear because if, he said if anyone would find him, they would kill him. But God, he said, whoever kills Cain will know my vengeance sevenfold. That means that if anyone was to kill Cain, their punishments would be seven times greater than his punishment. And so the Lord puts a mark on his forehead so that, so that whoever saw Cain would know that he was not to be killed. And so this is uh, showing God's mercy towards uh, Cain. Despite what Cain had done, what he did was wrong and he was paying the price for what he had done. He was being punished by God and being disciplined by God. But Cain, he just ran away being fearful that he may be killed. But God still was sorry for Cain and he was merciful towards him. And so he allowed a mark to be put on his forehead so that his life would be spared. And so this is a message for us. No matter what that we have done, there is a price to be paid, but God, he still loves us. Just because we have done something wrong doesn't mean that he stops loving us. Whatever we have done wrong, there is a, pun there is a price to be paid. There is a discipline. Just as your parents, they would discipline you for something they did, for something that you've done wrong in order for you to learn not to make that mistake again. But your parents still love you and they want what's best for you. That's why they'd be disciplining you. That's why they'd raise you up in the way that they want you to know what is right. And so in this manner, despite Cain being punished and being disciplined, God, he was still merciful towards Cain and he still loved, uh, and he still loved him and was sorry for him. And so when you see, and this is also another me message, whenever you see someone who's being punished, you, don't, you shouldn't really be happy about that person being punished, thinking, oh, they deserve it. Uh, it's all right, it's, they deserve it. Oh, good, they're, they're being punished. Okay, that's great. No, you shouldn't. That's not the way it should be. You should, feel, you should uh, be sympathetic towards them. You should have sympathy. That means you should, have a sorry, you should be sorry for them. And you should really hope the, the best for them. And you should hope for good things in their lives and not for anything that is bad. Because even though that, they, that they've done wrong, it may feel like that they're getting what they deserved, which may be something for you to be glad about, but that's not true. When they are being punished, it uh, is a reminder that whatever we do wrong, there is a price to be paid. And when that person is paying that price for that bad, for the wrong that he has done, you should think, you should really feel sorry for them and be sympathetic and hope that they have learned from their mistakes and that they will do what is right. And that is the thing that you should be happy about. And so, we learn two things. We learn God's mercy towards us, no matter what we have done wrong. And we learn to be sympathetic towards others who don't really know that what they're doing is wrong. And you should pray for them 
and really hope that they would come to God and ask for forgiveness. And so they would be saved and they would come to God and live the life that God wants them to live. And so this is the message that I have for you. Thank you all for listening. God bless you all. Thank you to everyone for joining today. A special thanks to everyone who participated in making this program possible. I hope you all have a blessed week. Now finally, to finish off, Carmel will be performing Psalms 42 by Tori Kelly for us. There's a quiet place That gives me peace when I'm alone with you There's a hiding place Your spirit's always there when I'm confused Only you can purify Satisfy my heart, it cries as the deep pants for the water. Some soul needs your Lord when. Like a desert here I need your living words for these dry bones Whoa. Jesus fill us up again With your presence flowing deep within New life begins
need you, Lord. I need you, Lord. Oh, I need you, Lord. I need you. I need. I need you. 